This week, the LG Nexus, a potential L series BB10 phone, a rumored iPad mini event date, and more. This is the Mobile Nation's Monday Brief. Greetings, mobile delegates. I'm Ashley Esqueda, and you're tuned in to the Mobile Nation's Monday Brief. Our first story this week is from Android Central. There's been a lot of leaks and chatter this week about LG's rumored Nexus device. We've seen pictures, we've seen leaked video, and one site even wrote up a review with a prototype running unoptimized software. People are clamoring, though, for the new Nexus device, and Android Central's got a What We Know thread online with every bit of information as it rolls in. We might see the official unveiling later this month at Dive into Mobile Conference, and Google will likely sell the device via the Play Store like the Nexus 7. So what will it be? The Nexus 4? The Optimus Nexus? If it's got 8 gigs of non-expandable storage, like some rumors suggest, more than a few Android fans are saying it'll be the LG Nexus DOA. Let's hope LG and Google have at least a 16 or 32 gigabyte model in the pipeline because 8 gigs isn't nearly enough space to handle my extensive Android gaming collection. Over at Crackberry, an interesting video surfaced from Mexico, where a fine gentleman shows off BB10, but wait a minute! That's not a dev alpha device that we're familiar with. The device this guy's using looks an awful lot like that BB10 render we showed you a couple shows ago. And while it's a pretty standard BB10 walkthrough, the device itself piqued the interest of the Crackberry Nation for sure. Se maneja el concepto de texto predictivo de una manera muy interesante porque vamos a manejar uh, la, las características del Time Warp. Es, es un concepto muy novedoso, el propio de BlackBerry. It's also interesting to note that at one point in the video he mentions App World being rebranded to the BlackBerry Store, which honestly is a great move by RIM if accurate. As we get closer and closer to BB10's official launch in first quarter 2013, I'm sure we will be seeing more of this kind of leak hit the airwaves. You can always head to crackberry.com for more information. Apple fans are still waiting on that fabled iPad mini, but they might not be waiting much longer. iMore reported last week that the event to reveal the 7-inch iPad is likely to be Tuesday, October 23rd. Usually we see Apple events happen on a Wednesday, but if we check our Mobile Nation's calendar, it's pretty apparent why Tim Cook would want to hold the presser a day earlier. The next day is the Note 2 event from Samsung, and the 26th is the day we're expecting to see Microsoft's official Surface launch. Everyone raced to beat Apple to its iPhone 5 event, and now Apple is turning the tables and attempting to ramp up enthusiasm before Samsung and Microsoft's two big events. We'll obviously keep you posted on the rumor, and when the date becomes official, it'll be up on iMore.com. Windows Phone Central had a write-up about exclusivity with phones and the various ways carriers get around it last week, and it looks like T-Mobile has done just that with the announcement of the Lumia 810. As AT&T got the exclusive on the Lumia 820 and 920, it looks like T-Mobile's getting an exclusive too, a variant of the 820 in name only. Phil was at CTIA in San Diego last week and got a little hands-on action. So here we have the uh, T-Mobile. See it up here, T-Mobile. This is the Lumia 810. It is Nokia. It has the Carl Zeiss camera, as you can see there. And that's about all we can show you. So as you might or might not know, Windows Phone 8 is not quite out from whatever depths it has been hiding in. And so phones aren't turned on. We're not allowed to show you Windows Phone 8. At this point, I'm hoping we'll see exclusive versions of the Lumia 920 start getting announced for anybody who doesn't want to leave their non-AT&T carrier here in the U.S. but wants that beautiful hardware in their pocket. It's silly, but I guess U.S. carriers each have to have something that makes their Lumia the most specialist Lumia ever. Since the announcement of Open WebOS, the WebOS nation's been wondering where parent company Graham's income could possibly come from. A few months back, HP said they'd be willing to provide cloud services like the app catalog and backups for partner manufacturers for a fee, which would obviously provide some income. Well, now we've learned another way Graham plans to generate revenue, WebOS Professional Edition. WebOS PE looks to work similarly to Red Hat Enterprise Linux and will offer additional support and services for any OEM looking to create hardware on a mass scale. It'll be a long while, though, before we actually see anything come of this, but it's a good sign that Graham's intentions are to lure in OEMs who want to have an OS, but don't want to do most of the heavy lifting. Any takers? 
That's it for your Mobile Nations Monday Brief. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mobile nations. Check out our network of dazzling and informative podcasts at mobilenations.com slash shows. And you can follow me on Twitter at Ashley Eskeva. Nations, you have been briefed.